Welcome to Tidco's Trails and Traditions. Our 20-minute journey will take us into Central and South Trinidad from Karani to Maruga, though not necessarily in that order. This expansive area is such an interesting reflection of the essence of Trinidad and Tobago in its many varied aspects. We will learn about our history from our discovery by Christopher Columbus to the labor riots of the 1930s. We will explore different aspects of our culture, music and religious festivals and discover exciting natural wonders from hidden waterfalls to mud volcanoes and the pitch lake. We will revel in the elegance of our local architecture and the beauty of our nature trails, rich with wildlife and lush vegetation. It's an exciting journey that's ahead of us with much to be learned. No doubt you will be so inspired you'll want to take the journey yourself. Trinidad and Tobago, beautiful twin gems of the Caribbean Sea. Paradise found. But where did we come from? Who found us? Who have we become today? Let's discover this magical tale of mystery together as we trek through the trails and revere the traditions of Karani to Maruga, treasures unknown. Let's begin at the source, Maruga, on Trinidad's southern coast, meaning land of hope. It was a place of bounty for the original inhabitants of our islands, the Amerindians, with rich vegetation and an abundant water supply from the Maruga River. It was also the hopeful sign Christopher Columbus needed when he made his historical voyage to discover the new world. He had attempted to land his vessels at both Guayaguayari and Galeota Point, but the shore was too rocky for the ships to sail inland, and the next natural break in the coast was at Grashama Beach. It was here that on August 1, 1498, Columbus claimed Trinidad as La Trinité for Spain and raised a white cross for Christianity. A cross has been erected on La Punta de la Playa by the residents of Maruga in commemoration of this great event and Discovery Day celebrations which attract thousands of people each year are a defining feature of Maruga life to this day. The Maruga 500 committee was responsible in conjunction with the Rose Foundation for making this a very memorable occasion. Since the discovery of Trinidad by Christopher Columbus, when he first met the Amerindians, the Arawaks, other people came to this area. In fact, we had a mixture of different races. First, the Spaniards, followed by the French. Then we had the Negroes coming in very, very dominantly, with sprinkling of Chinese, Portuguese, Europeans, etc. We usually celebrate discovery in this part of Trinidad on the last weekend in July. Another historical Maruga site is the La Rafa Spring Bridge, which spanned the same river Columbus used to water his ships, allowing vehicles to gently undulate their way across. The river is quaint in its attraction, but the unique bridge collapsed in 1998, just a year before its 100th anniversary. Maruga residents are in the process of attracting corporate sponsorship to restore the bridge to its former glory as one of our national treasures. The infrastructure is to be upgraded, the bridge is to be replaced in its natural state as a freestanding bridge. Via the Rose Foundation, many exciting plans are afoot for this land of beginnings, including a tourism drive to attract visitors to this area. The plans are that we will have bread and breakfast hotels, we want to also have craft markets. The, the area is, is ripe for, for ecotourism and it is hoped that we will open nature trails, excursion up the river with boat trips. Another southern coastal village, Cedrus, reputed for its fishing industry and coconut estates, is proud of the part it played in the discovery of the new world. Columbus Bay is the first landing point at which Columbus came into contact with the Amerindians and saw these three rocks known as the Three Sisters, hence the name La Trinité, three in one. They were once connected to the Venezuelan mainland and are still linked to Soldado Island via a reef formation. The lovely beach and calm shallow waters of Columbus Bay entice many bathers to the area. 
The sieges area is picturesque and marsh-like, with vast areas of swampland so different from the lush tropical rainforest that spans our shores. The mangrove attracts beautiful coastline birds such as the Galanul, the heron and the egret. Amazing sights to see if you wait long enough for them to soar past. The scenery is peaceful, but watch out for the alligators. After all, it is a swamp. From the beaches of Cedrus, you can actually see Ikakas Point, which is the toe of Trinidad's boot-like shape. Judging from the land erosion that is taking place here because of the strong currents, Trinidad may not be boot-shaped for much longer. Ikakas' curved coastline borders a lush maze of coconut trees, lagoons and high swamp grass that are home to water birds and lazily grazing cattle. But this easy-going atmosphere has its antithesis, the many sites of mud volcanic activity. Central and South Trinidad seem to be prime areas for this type of volcanic activity. There are many mud volcano locations to choose from if you'd like to witness the fascinating bubbling of the stacks and subsequent geometric patterns of the mud. Devil's Woodyard in New Grant is a relatively young volcanic site, with its first eruption taking place in 1852, shaking the entire Amerindian village built around it. The villagers believed that the devil himself had come from beneath the earth and felled the forest in his anger. The most recent volcanic mud activity in Trinidad happened in the village of Caparo. The actual relief of the land in this region was created by the intermittent eruptions of this mud volcano. Its last eruption was in February 1997, spewing mud for seven minutes at an average height of 250 feet, covering 11 houses and destroying 15 acres of land. Peparo is a place that draws you in, entices you. The people are hospitable and those who are familiar with hiking trails can take you to Blue Basin, which is a beautiful trek framed by a natural arch of thick emerald foliage leading you to a river with huge stones and pools. For a little bit of musical fear here in Peparo, you must visit Brass Shorty Eyes and Love Circle Ranch for a truly uplifting train style of music. And here with me I have the man himself, Mas Shorty Eye. Shorty Eye, thank you very much for having us here. My pleasure. Tell me about the Love Circle Ranch. Well, the place was designed to receive people, mm -hmm. to give them a sense of quiet, a uh, sort of sanctuary kind of feeling. I want to develop this place even much more. I put a little, a few, fix up a few rivers in the back so that people could come and picnic and all the picnic and that kind of thing. So we're looking for, forward to having something really divine, if I might use that word, to, to invite people from at home and abroad to come and share. You see when you train a child how to go, when they get old they are moving so, when the tree young and you bend it wrong, it's hard to straighten when it all, when it all and strong. Listen to me, change your attitude. Upliftment goes hand in hand with spirituality and nowhere else do you experience such an outward awareness and appreciation of a higher power's existence than in Central and South Trinidad. Miracle Ministries in Chase Village is just as much a sign of worship as the beautiful Mandir on the sea in Karapachaima. As you enter the holy ground, you are awestruck by the devotion that inspired Sura Sadhu to rebuild his temple after suffering persecution at the hands of the authorities. The coastal area on which this mandir is built complements the sanctity of the atmosphere as shorebirds soar through the air and sing their songs of peace. This area is reputed for the number and vast diversity of shoreline birds seen here. A festival that heralds the unity of all religions is the Feast of La Divina Pastora in Separia. The statue with her flowing jet hair, copper skin and piercing eyes is believed by both Christians and non-Christians to have healing powers. The Muslim community celebrates its festivities during Eid al-Fatur, marking the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Muslims fast during this time as a means of self-purification and celebrate only when the new moon is seen. Eid is celebrated with fellowship, food and fun. Diwali, the festival of lights, is another celebration that all religions identify with. 
It is the age-old story of the triumph of good over evil, light over darkness, all brought together in a most unique way by the beautiful and symbolic lighting of Diaz. The Diwali Nagar site in Shibonas has become a center point of the religious celebrations. Another Hindu festival typical of this region is Pagwa, noted for its colorful parades, music and dancing, in which participants spray abir, purple colored water, on one another. Mosquito Creek, as it is locally called, stretches over the area where the Oropuch Lagoon meets the Gulf of Paria. It is the link, both physical and spiritual, between San Fernando and Deep South, urban and rural. Many Hindus revere this area as a cremation site called the Shore of Peace, where they bid loved ones their final farewells. Trinidad has seen many rites of passage, from discovery to emancipation and beyond, each with its own tapestry of stories and traditions that have woven us into the colorful people we are today. Part of this tradition still remains in the heart of Shibonis, now a major shopping center. Lion House, as was depicted in B.S. Naipaul's most critically acclaimed novel, A House for Mr. Biswas. Among the tumble-down timber and corrugated iron buildings in the high street at Arwakas, Hanuman House stood like an alien white fortress, Naipaul wrote. The balustrade which hedged the flat roof was crowned with a concrete statue of the benevolent monkey god Hanuman. In reality, the statues that Naipaul speaks of are actually imposing lion sculptures, hence the modern-day reference to Lion House. The house is in the process of being refurbished as a cultural landmark in the midst of the growing borough of Shibonas. There have also been far more public struggles punctuated by the labor riots of the 1930s when trade union leader Tubal Uriah Buzz Butler led marches through Faisabad. Each year on Labor Day, the town stages reenactments of these events. Nature's treasures abound in central and south Trinidad, from Karani to the tip of the stocking. The Karani Bird Sanctuary is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Trinidad as it is the roosting site of our precious national bird, the Scarlet Ibis. The bird, indigenous to South America, now has nesting colonies in both the Karani and Oropooch swamps. The swamp down is a perfect breeding ground because the crustaceans that the ibis feed on abound in these areas. Winston Nanan owns a tour company which offers trips through the waterways of the Karani swamp. We have as many as six separate scarlet ibis colonies with about 4,000 birds per colony. Visitors are awestruck by the rich beauty of the swamp dotted with red when the ibis come home to roost. The Point of Pear Wildfowl Trust also does its part to protect wildlife species as a non-profit organization. The Trust is actively involved in the research and captive breeding of protected species of waterfowl and other birds for eventual release into natural wildlife areas. It has also introduced an educational audiovisual program to teach schools and communities more about how to preserve our wildlife. The area itself, which is a natural wetland habitat, is a peaceful haven for visitors with its relaxing nature trails and ponds. With me is world-renowned environmentalist Molly Gaskin. Molly, thank you so much for having us here at the Wildfowl Trust. Tell me, what is it about the Point of Pear Wildfowl Trust? When was it established and why was it put together? Well, it was established quite a while ago. It became a trust in 1966. The work of the trust is many faceted. Mainly it's the research, breeding and reintroduction into natural habitat. Our wetland birds, mm -hmm. wetland species, but mainly our wetland birds. And we are also very much, obviously, into the lobbying, the preservation of our natural habitats. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't make sense breeding these birds, putting them back in, monitoring and seeing that they are successfully uh, rehabilitated, which they have been doing, and then the habitat has been lost. Mm -hmm. So the main part of our work is to lobby, to preserve the habitats as well as our birds. La Vega Estate in Grand Cougar is another haven for nature lovers with 250 acres of land, dotted with ornamental plants, fir trees and lots of recreational space for picnics, family outings, canoeing, fishing in the lake, nature trailing or just quiet meditation. 
Within close proximity of La Vega is the Carmelita Waterfall, a beautiful fall originating from the Montserrat Hills of the Central Range. This popular bathing site is located within the folds of these hills. Another famous hill of Trinidad's southern landscape is the San Fernando Hill, which stands like a guardian over this country's second largest city, the urban hub of the Southland. The winding roads you take to actually reach the peak of the hill are sloped according to its natural contours. The hill, a unique geological entity, originally had a sugarloaf shape, but is now a mere shadow of its former self, mainly because of the amount of quarrying that has happened here. The hill is now a full 35 meters shorter than its original height. To the first known inhabitants, the Amerindians, the hill was a place of worship. Residents of the area, realizing the hill's significance, began to protest the quarrying in the 1970s, and by 1988, it was declared a recreational park. Visitors can now enjoy breathtaking bird's eye views of the west coast from this vantage point. Yet another natural wonder is the world-famous Pitch Lake in La Brie, Spanish for pitch. The Amerindians were well versed in its many uses and they introduced Sir Walter Raleigh to its wonders when he came to Trinidad on his quest for El Dorado in 1595. This lake is self-replenishing, allowing Raleigh to use the abundant black gold to cork his ships and declare it most excellent wood. The Pitch Lake is the only lake of its kind in the world, a sort of eighth wonder, and certainly the only one you can actually walk on. There are also many birds and flowers indigenous to the lake. Many legends abound about this cone-shaped natural wonder, the most popular of which is that two Amerindian tribes went to war. The tribe that lived on the lake won the battle and celebrated their victory by eating the colibri or hummingbird. The gods were angry at the sacrilegious feast and drowned the entire tribe in the bowels of the lake. It is no wonder then that even today everything is pulled towards the lake, hence the bumpy landscape of La Brie. Perhaps the most expected natural wonders for any Caribbean island are its beaches. And this region of Trinidad has quite a few to boast of, including Vesany Beach, where Titco manages an impressive facility for guests. Another point of interest to visitors is Nolly's Tunnel in Tabakit. Its rustic setting hints at the fact that the tunnel is actually more than a century old, having been opened on August 13, 1898. The quarter-mile-long tunnel was originally built to accommodate the entry of trains into Tabakit. When trains were introduced to Trinidad society, they were a sign of advancement. Now they symbolize a lost era when compared to the more modern-day industrial heartland of Trinidad and Tobago. Sport has always been a major part of the lives of Trinidadians, and Central and South are no different. Union Park is being refurbished to accommodate the FIFA Under-17 Youth Football Championship in 2001, the first major international event of the millennium in TNT. Thus, people now regard tourism, industry and sport as the way of the future, taking Trinidad and Tobago proudly into the next century. Any of these destinations can be reached by departing from Port of Spain and heading south along the Uriah Butler Highway. Here you will pass Chihuahuas and eventually arrive at San Fernando. From San Fernando, one can head to Maruga. Leave San Fernando and travel via Princess Town. To get to Icampus from San Fernando, travel via La Brea. If you would like to discover the trails and traditions of Karani to Maruga, you can stay at any one of these guest houses on your journey.